Greetings, everyone. It's once again Closer Look Time here on the Multimedia Chronicles. So today, I thought we'd dive into the horror TV show collection. Now, a while back, actually way back in 2014, longtime uh, viewer Iggy, a.k.a. Israel Decoy, sent me this set here. Monsters, the complete series, which was a three-season uh, anthology horror series, each one focusing, as the title implies, on a different type of monster. And uh, a really fun series. I actually blew through the first season in about a week, just uh, kind of marathoning, and I've been kind of picking my way through the rest over the past three years. But uh, really good fun. I remember watching this periodically on TV and really enjoyed it. Now, here's the thing. Monsters was actually from the same producers of and was kind of a spiritual successor to another anthology horror series from a few years earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tales from the Dark Side. There we go. And this is the complete series. Uh, Paramount's uh, CBS Video Division, D Division, Division has been re-releasing a lot of TV series in what they call Epic Packs, which are basically just gigantic cases with individual trays for each disc. And uh, yeah, they've been just re-releasing a ton of their shows that way, um, which is great because these tend to be a lot cheaper than the original releases and also don't take up as much shelf space. So very nice indeed. So I figured since Iggy was so generous as to send me this, I should definitely pick up this as well. I'd actually been wanting both of them anyway, so, you know, it just gave me more of an incentive to do so already having the follow-up series. So it's funny because Tales from the Dark Side is actually four seasons. Monsters is three, yet uh, Monsters is actually the thicker set. <laughs> Basically because it's three keep cases rather than an epic pack. Anyway, I'm rambling a lot, and we haven't even done the uh, opening titles, so Tales from the Dark Side and Monsters on a closer look today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, let's head on down to the black box and check out Tales from the Dark Side, the epic pack re-release, and Monsters, the complete series is, is Okay, well, even though I got them in reverse order, we'll go in the order that they originally appeared. So first up, we have Tales from the Dark Side, which ran for four seasons, 90 episodes total. Um, there was a pilot episode that aired in October of 1983, and then it actually wasn't until the following year, in September of 1984, that it went to uh, full series, and then it ran for four seasons, from 1984 to 1988. So this is how it'll look on your shelf, actually quite nice. And then the other side is uh, basically the same. Very cool. It's basically just a gigantic slipcover. So we take a look here, you can see the back there. There's um, there's a few extras on here. There's not a ton of stuff, but uh, we'll we'll take a peek at that uh, in just a few minutes here. So basically, just slides out of the slipcover, and then you have this ginormous keep case. Look at that. This is what's uh, what Paramount CBS is calling the Epic Pack. They've actually been re-releasing a lot of their TV series in this format. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation, for example, was re-released in this format. Actually, all the Star Trek series were released in this format. So there you go. So then on the inside, we have the list of episodes on the inner sleeve there, and the special features that are uh, on those, on, basically on the last disc of every season. And there you go. So you can see it's got, uh, you know, two discs per, per thing, but, uh, I mean, it's... It's raised enough that it might make a little bit of contact with the disc underneath, but, uh, but you know, it's all right. It's fine. It's all right. I've had, uh, I've had disc cases that are far more potentially dangerous to the discs than these, so, and, uh, oh, and, and there you go, and it just, it actually just comes right out. Uh, is it supposed to do that? <laughs> I, do, I don't know. I don't have a lot of these epic packs, so... Anyway, there you go. So you can just take it right out, apparently, if you want to. So, 
Yeah, I think it actually does because it doesn't appear to be. There's no clips in here or anything. It just kind of just kind of sits in there like that. Yeah. So there you go. I guess it does make it easier to get to the discs rather than uh, having to dig around in the case here. So yeah, pretty cool. So let's actually slip the uh, we'll slip the slip cover out or slip we'll slip the slip out and we'll see what. Uh, what we have for extras here so there you can get a uh, a better look at it just gonna zoom way in so we'll start with season one here we go so you can see you've got about uh eight eight or nine episodes per disc essentially so quite nice there we go and you've got a few special features i'm gonna bother reading the special features you can see it for yourself there it is there is a special feature, which is quite nice. It uh, looks like an audio commentary. Sorry, my, my display screen is backwards, so <laughs> I'm having to kind of struggle to see. And then season two, got lots of episodes on there as well. Um, as I was saying, I mean, the beauty of anthology shows is even if uh, the episode you're watching doesn't particularly strike your fancy, you know, stick with the show, because chances are the next one will be a good one, you know, and... Everybody's different. Everybody's going to like different things. No extras on that one. And then here, finally, we got uh, all of those. So, pretty cool. Very simple. And we've got a few few more special features on there. So, very cool. So, what? I'm actually curious what we do. I haven't even looked at that. So, we got audio commentary on Trick or Treat by George Romero. That's right, I forgot. This is actually executive produced by George Romero. I knew there was something special about these shows. Um, essentially, this was meant to be based on, uh, very loosely based on, slash inspired by Creepshow. So, a lot of the same people who worked on Creepshow, behind the scenes, also worked on this. So, think of this basically as Creepshow the series, because a lot of the same people worked on it. Let's, uh, let's pull back a bit, shall we? There we go. Okay, so we got that all back in there. Excellent. Put the actual discs back in. Uh, why, why is this giving me trouble? It was fine before. There we go. Alright. And then finally... da -da! So there you go. So Tales from the Dark Side, if you include the pilot episode, basically ran for five years, except the first year was just the single pilot episode. So, 1983 to 1988. Then, without missing a beat, the following season, 1988 to 89 season, we got Monsters. Yeah, again, same people working on it, for the most part, and this is a direct follow-up to Tales from the Dark Side. Except in this case, as you may guess from the title, this focuses more on strange supernatural creatures now i should mention about these shows there they it was they were both very low budget and uh as such you know don't have a ton of production value so this is just a big box that they uh come in pretty uh straightforward i think the original tales from the uh dark side releases were like that as well so let's just take a look at uh each individual season here well first off we basically just have three keep cases for the three seasons and as you can see from the covers, I mean, obviously focusing on different types of monsters. So let's take a look at season one. So here we go. We have this fine gentleman. Uh, obvi an obvious nod to Lon Chaney in London After Midnight there. Very cool. So each season was 24 episodes. And I think you get a few extras on here. Do we get extras? I don't, actually, I don't know if we do. This might actually be bare bones. Just take a look here. Nope, they're bare bones. Never mind. I'm full of it. <laughs> so we don't get a ton of extras across the, uh, the sets there. So there's the back. And if we open it up, uh, much like the Tales from the Dark Side set, we have all our episodes listed inside there. And the discs, a little more uh, creative disc uh, art here. We got these cool eyeballs, bloody eyeballs for the, uh, for the discs, which is pretty cool. And then on the back there. So 
once again, uh, let's let, let's pop the uh, the insert out just so we can get a better look at the contents for the individual discs. I'll just zoom in here. There we go. So there's disc one. You can just pause it if you want to read it. And then disc two. Yeah, I, I powered through this season pretty quick when uh, when Iggy sent me the the set. I couldn't wait to dive in. There we go. Uh, prior to that, all I had was a VHS tape of like two random episodes. And there we go. And just a better better look at the back there, I guess. Very nice. And if we look down a little ways, there you go. I mean, as you can see, very cool monster makeup throughout. Uh, I mean, this definitely didn't skimp on it. Uh, this, that was the great thing about 80s uh, television horror. I mean, they were really trying to push the envelope. Because uh, prior to that, TV horror had been kind of... Uh, you know, it would have the atmosphere and whatnot, but it tended to shy away from the uh, the blood and guts. Not to say that this uh, series is particularly gory, per se, but uh, as with any anthology series, um, and much like Creepshow, which is, you know, the, the primary uh, uh, basis of the idea for these two shows, um, th there are stories that are a little more serious and stories that are a little more tongue-in-cheek. So you, you definitely get quite a mix. Uh, there, there's some, there was one story, what was it called? I'm trying to remember. It was about an alien that uh, came to Earth and there was like some kind of disease. And uh, I forget, it's been a while since I watched it. Glim Glim, that's what it was. Yeah, a hideous alien may be humanity's only hope for survival against a deadly, mysterious disease. That story is so emotionally powerful. Like, <laughs> um, I, I was pretty much moved to tears by it, and I, I never expected to say that about an episode of Monsters. Oh, we got a little bit of damage to the case there. Let's give that a little spin there. Okay. So this is the, uh, the Season 2 set here, of course. Uh, we'll take a look at the inside insert in just a moment. And uh, there you go. So once again, we got the eyeball design. Very, very nice. But, um, but yeah, I was saying how the, the shows are fairly low budget. Uh, one thing you'll notice if you kind of watch for it is most stories only take place in one or two locations, like one or two sets generally. And uh, the reason for that, quite simply, is to save money. So only having a couple of, where are we going here? Where are we going? There we go. Only having a couple of sets to build for each episode meant they could save on production costs. And the sets themselves tend to be quite small and the action is confined to uh, a, you know, a minimum of locations, uh, which makes sense. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you, you gotta figure doing an anthology series where everything is different every week has gotta be quite different production-wise and cost-wise from say doing a regular series where you can just have standing sets that you reuse over and over again. So doing an anthology show like this, you got to uh, you know you got to cut costs wherever you can. So I think it makes sense that they chose that route and basically just had each episode take place in a minimum of locations. Sorry, just putting the insert back in here. Come on, don't be stubborn. Get in there. Nice and comfy. You'll like it. All right, here we go. Oh, why? Why am I having so much trouble here? There we go. Because uh, I'm doing it backwards. That's why. I'm I'm an idiot. And there go the discs. Excellent. <laughs> How do these go in here again? There we go. All right. Yeah. See, one of the clips busted off there. That happens. Um, I I I don't know how many box sets and keep cases I've gotten mail that have had that issue. So here we have uh, Season 3, the final 24 episodes. Very cool indeed. It's funny, Tales from the Dark Side is the longer show, yet it's taking us longer to go through the monster sets. Oh, really? Another one? Uh, oh, well, whatever. I mean, you, you only notice when you open the case, otherwise they're quite snug in there. And uh, again, so you notice, of course, each season has a different colored uh, center to the eyeball. Oh. And there, there's the actual clip. Apparently, I've never opened this case. Um, 
yeah, so there you go. So I think where I left off uh, in my marathoning was about halfway through season two, so I still have like a whole season's worth of stuff to uh, to watch. So uh, take this off, take a look underneath. Got this, ew, it's like something out of the thing. Wow, crazy. Um, but if you're a fan of uh, like practical effects and creature effects and whatnot, uh, these are definitely ones to check out, especially monsters, I think, because it focuses a lot more on that type of thing. And uh, and you get some of the some of the top talent working in the biz at the time, uh, doing a lot of the effects. So definitely worth checking out if you're uh, if you're a fan of that sort of thing, as I am. So it's all about the practical effects, man. You gotta remember, this was this was 1988 through, uh, what was it, 88, 89, 89, 90, 90, 91. So 1988 through 1991. So all told, between both shows, you got seven seasons of good old-fashioned anthology horror fun. And uh, as I say, if you liked Creep Show, you'll probably enjoy these shows as well because they're very much, uh, very much have the same kind of vibe to them. So just look at this. Wow, it's like a, it's like a, fleshy loaf of bread with an eyeball in it awesome <laughs> and then and then there we go so if there's any question as to which discs have which episodes hopefully that answers the question for you so let's pull back again and we'll uh put this all back together the right way this time there we go very nice, very nice. Yes, I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I'm very grateful, Iggy, for you sending me this set. Uh, I, I've been really enjoying it, and uh, I know I will continue to enjoy it for many years to come. So there you go, all back in there. Let's put them both side by side. So there you go, the entire Creep Show the Series collection. <laughs> I should mention also, speaking of movies, there was a Tales from the Dark Side movie as well, which came out, I think it was in 1989, 1990, thereabouts. Um, that's the one thing I need to basically fully complete this set. Um, I don't think it's had a Blu-ray release. I'm pretty sure it's on DVD. But, uh, yes, I just need to pick that up and then, then we'll have everything. And there you have it. So... Yeah, if, like me, you're a fan of low-budget uh, 80s and 90s anthology horror shows, or, well, just anthology horror in general, actually, um, you might want to check these out. They're actually not too, too expensive, and you get a lot of entertainment value out of them. Um, you know, as with any anthology series, they're kind of hit and miss as far as the, the quality of the episodes goes, but that's the great thing about anthology series. If you hit an episode that you're not particularly thrilled by, chances are the next one will be a good one or, you know, whatever. There, there's going to be good and bad in there, and not the same things are going to appeal to everybody. Myself, I like the good and bad, so it's all good to me. But, uh, yeah, so big thanks again three years ago still to Iggy for sending me monsters, and then, of course, uh, to, I guess, myself for picking up Tales from the Dark Side. Alrighty, that is it for this year, this week's Closer Look. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, especially Kyle Pellegrin, who, who is still my highest level sponsor. Thank you very much, dude. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. So until then, sayonara. Sayonara.